There's a real shake-up in the church. And the church at the time, okay, it wasn't a Christian church, it was a Jewish church. And there's a massive shake-up going on. For 200, for 200 years, there'd been massive issues in the Jewish church, if you want to call it the Jewish church, okay? And Jesus came to get rid of religion, to set it free. And if you have a look, if you read the Word of God and see what's taking place today, it's like identical to what was taking place when he very first came. Israel missed the coming of the Messiah. They still think he's going to come the first time. But he's coming the second time. And he's coming soon. And that's why it's so important for us to know the times and signs of, of today. And we need to know who each one of us are in Christ in Christ Jesus, who each one of us are, who we are. We are children of the living God. And I shared a bit last week about a friend of God, and I'm just going to start, I'm just going to start on that point today, and then I'm going to give you an example, a great example of that in the Word of God. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to bring your Word this morning. I just pray for your anointing with clear speech. What's of me you'll take away, but what's of you, Lord, you'll just touch us in an amazing way. I really believe today, Lord, you're going to do amazing things in our lives. You're going to give us a fresh revelation of who we are in you. really believe that, Lord. And so, Father, I just pray, Lord, as each one of us open our hearts to receive from you today, just do your work. Holy Spirit, come and do what you do best. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As I said, 2008 was the year, the glory of God in our lives. I really believe that, I still believe it. That everything we do, we do it with honesty and integrity. John 15, verses 14 to 17, thanks Mike. This is the scripture, what we used last week. You are my friends, this is what Jesus is saying to his disciples. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because the servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. In other words, every believer is to succeed. That's God's desire. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command to love each other. To love each other. Jesus told them that no longer did he call them servants but friends. The disciples were given access to the secrets in the heart of God. They were now called friends of God. At that moment in history, the disciples' focus shifted from commandments, a set of rules, the way to obey God, which is impossible to follow, to the presence of God. It was like they crossed over, over, over a line that day. These are the commandments. That day they crossed over. It is now the presence of God. It's a heart issue. It's not a set of mind-boggling rules and, reg and regulations, which are impossible to follow but it's now the presence of God. This place in, in history, the bestowal of friendship, made a revolution we continue to experience possibly today. See you, Jen. Shalom. Have a great day, won't you? Shalom. Take care, Jen. Shalom. See ya. Jesus explained the difference between a servant and a friend to his disciples. He explained the difference between a servant and a friend. Servants don't know what the master is doing. Servants don't have access to the personal, intimate realm of their master. Servants are task oriented, or sorry, or, or oriented. Obedience is their primary focus and that is right for a servant's life depends on success in that area which is right but, this, but listen to this but friends have a different focus 
Obedience will always be important. Obedience is important. But friends are less concerned about disobeying than they are about disappointing. There's a difference, isn't there? Liberty is found in this. Jesus on the cross and he alone paid the price of our access to the Father. And because of the cross, we gain access to the Father's heart. Thereby granting us the freedom that comes from the truth we gain through that unlimited knowledge of his heart. Encounters with God as an intimate are quite different from those of a servant. And that's what I believe God is going to do to us today. He's going to show us the difference between being a servant and a friend. And if we grasp that, it will actually change our life in him completely. Just like that. Just as the disciples when he said, the commandments are no more. It's now. You are a friend. God's heartbeat becomes our heartbeat as we celebrate the shift in our own desires. The way we live our lives change. Instead of working for Him, we work with Him. Yeah, there's a difference in that. We work with Him. We work not for His favour, to gain His favour, but we work from His favour. We've already got His favour. You can't do any more in this life you can stay awake for the next 100 years, 24-7, and you can't get his favour any more than what you've got today. You can't earn his favour because he loves you as you are. He loves you. Say the person next to you, God loves you as you are. Right. You've got to, we've got to grasp that, guys. We've got to grasp that, that God loves us as we are. It's hard for some people to love themselves, you know that? The Bible, the Bible tells us if you can't love yourself, there's no way you can love anybody else. That's what it says. It's impossible. If you don't love yourself, you can't love anyone else. We need to get into our hearts, right there, right deep down, that He loves me because of who I am. I am Steve Yates, and he loves me because I'm Steve Yates. Keith is, Keith is Keith Graves, and he loves Keith Graves because he's Keith Graves. And that's the same for every one of us. We need to get that. There's got to be a day when it comes, we haven't got to beat ourselves up anymore. That spoke to somebody here, doesn't it? We haven't got to beat ourselves up anymore. He loves us because of who we are. He can't love you anymore. Have you got that? He can't love you anymore. So that's the person that he can't love you anymore. And he can't love you less. It is so important we grasp this. Because for us to reach our full potential, we need to know this. Because we'll never reach our full potential in him if we don't realise who we are. Does that make sense? In this position, he entrusts you and me with more of his power and we are naturally changed into his likeness more and more. Father God's desire is that you and I become more like Jesus every day. We are to become more and more like Jesus every day. So tomorrow you'll be more like Jesus than you are today. On Tuesday you'll be more like Jesus than you were on Monday. On Wednesday you'll be more like Jesus than you were on Tuesday. Have you got that? That's Father God's desire for you and me. But we need to know who we are for that to happen. 